What's up guys, I'm Dunmere, Top 100 Overwatch player, and I'm going to show you guys how to play Lucio today with some gameplay from a pro player named Wicca. So, I'm going to run through this and talk first about the abilities slash what changed from Overwatch 1, then I'm going to go about the how to play of Lucio, and then I'm going to go through an actual gameplay breakdown and explain everything to you guys. So, starting off, Lucio didn't really get too many direct changes from Overwatch 1. The biggest and real well only change, right, is that the ultimate charge to charge up its ultimate is now 12% less. So while there is one less teammate to be healing, you're gonna be getting your beat up a little bit more consistently. So that's the core change. Yes, of course, you do also have the ability to um, passively heal yourself out of combat like all sports do, but that also did get nerfed a little bit down on Lucio, so it's not like you're just you know, crazy healing yourself all the time. So um, going from here, what makes Lucio different now? And really, how should you be playing Lucio? So Lucio used to be kind of just like a speed bot, essentially. You used to just kind of, you know, stay with your Reinhardt, stay with whatever you want to speed around, and just speed them somewhere, and that was basically it. But because Lucio is different now, and because there's one less tank, and really, really because there's no longer a powerful Super Omega Demon Brigida that was um, capable of making the other support player not die, you don't play Lucio quite the same. Lucio essentially has turned into like a hybrid of Brigida and D.Va. And I know that probably sounds a little bit strange, but Lucio was responsible for doing things like bragging out more, um, like targeting enemies that are, are in dangerous locations. And, you know, like D.Va used to do, like climbing up onto a high ground to knock somebody off, that sort of thing. But really what Lucio is very, very capable of doing is assisting teammates who get targeted, right? So. Very particularly, you're going to see Lucio staying a lot with the other support and keeping them alive. If like a Tracer jumps onto like your Ana or whatever, before you had to Brigitte to pack it and then try and um, slam onto the Tracer and stop them, now you have a Lucio to do that. So that does seem a little bit strange, but if you played Brigitte before or you played D.Va before or are just capable of, you know, understanding the concept of wanting to heal your teammate and um, save your your cooldowns to help support your other support your support your other support um you'll do well on lucio so um with the general gameplay style covered like what are the specifics about that so specifically lucio is going to start every single match every single fight just spamming from range beat is a very powerful ultimate so you do want to be charging it as much as possible um which is why you can see in this gameplay here we have wicked just spamming from range right even if you're not able to like actually fully secure a kill you want to be spamming from range now there are times where you're gonna get opportunities to go and frag something um or you go for something like we just did and you're gonna get caught out that's okay but there is definitely regardless still timings to want to push things right which we'll cover a little bit more in a second for lucio's healing capabilities you want to really be saving your camp for mainly just healing rather than speed um, there are times to use it for speed, but if you're not like in a very high elo, you're not going to really be getting a lot of value out of that. Because even if you're using comms and you're like, all right guys, let's speed in, let's go, 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 right? To push an advantage or something like that, your team's potentially not really going to help you too much. So you really want to be using it for healing, using it to peel like someone on your team's getting low, um, when a group of your teammates are getting low or whatever. Especially also if someone tries to focus out your other support. As you saw earlier in the round, when a Tracer turned and was attacking um, the other support player, we had Wicca turn, poop him off, poke some damage in. It's not necessarily quite as effective as what Brigida was capable of doing before with the packs and then um, slamming into them and all that kind of stuff with the like the armor, but it's still extremely effective. So that's really what you're looking to do in this character for that kind of stuff. For things like wall riding, you do want to obviously take advantage of it. It obviously speeds you up, it gives you a little bit of unpredictability, but you won't you don't want to be doing it out in the open too much. Um, there's times to do it, but as you can see in this gameplay, you're gonna see um, our Lucio player here not going too crazy, not just you know jumping on the walls in front of like a Widowmaker or something like that. Being in the air does make your movement a lot more predictable, so you do have to be kind of careful about that. And you know, you wanna you wanna be making sure that you don't get punished, right? And just die because of no reason. So moving back to what I was talking about, about like going for dives and stuff like that, the same way that the same way that D.Va used to like try and 
wait until there was a target out of position, like a, let's say like an Ash on a high ground or something like that, and then go focus it so that I wouldn't be able to just stand on top of your Reinhardt and just burn your backline. That's Lucio's job now. And you could do it before, but since it wasn't really like your primary job, it wasn't like too big of a focus in general, but now that's really what you're going to want to watch for. So basically what you're going to see a lot in this gameplay is you're going to see Wicca sitting in the back line, just kind of spamming, just from range as you can see here. Not doing anything too crazy, using cover, um, staying on heal to heal, heal our team. Just spamming in the back line, spamming, spamming, spamming. Um, and then when like you're going to see like a shift in, in momentum, that's when you push forward a little bit. Now they're all standing in like one area right here, but let's just say like, um, let, me, let me pause it to explain it for you guys real quick. But let's say like right now, like there was a, um, a Genji going for a flank onto the side of our Baptiste here. That would be the perfect time for our Lucio player to go and take care of that. You know, stop to speed, jump across, boop them off. And that tiny little boop will be potentially enough to just stop them from being able to secure a kill on the Baptiste. The Baptiste can use regenerative birth to help themselves. And then you have now carried your other support player. Supports in this game get massive value out of taking care of other supports. And I know people kind of think that supports can't carry, but you can absolutely deadlift games by just never letting your other support players die. Um, especially if you are the support that's, you know, whose job is it, whose job it is to do that. So, but as to fragging, we get a good little example here. When somebody does get out of position, <clears throat> even if they're not something like it's a main target, it's time for you to go for them. So right here, you can see this Genji get out of position. Like a non-aggressive Lucio might, you know, not try and push that, but because Wicca pushes that, they're able to secure the kill of the team. Um, moving on from here, though, something I want to talk about is booping enemies. You just saw a really good example, which I'm gonna, I'm gonna pack it up again. Sorry, guys, I don't want to do this too much, but um, when an enemy gets out of position, particularly like a tank, like the fight starts devolving and you can get away with it, it's a perfect time to try and push something into your team. Like here, you can see the Lucio, the Zarya getting too close. Get a little push on them. These little micro pushes can just be enough to secure like kills on things that you wouldn't normally be able to get. They're super valuable. Even if you don't get a full kill off of them, you're going to knock the enemy tank down a lot. Like, getting the sort of boob could be one of Zarya's bubble charges that she doesn't have for later, so that she'll die in a later fight. Um, it's that kind of stuff. It's kind of like micro carrying, but you can get a lot of value out of that. So, um, boops in general are just really, really useful for pushing enemies out of a position. Like I was saying before, pushing like a, an Ash on a high ground out of position. They're very useful for displacing like an enemy tank, something that's not super mobile. Maybe like the enemy Ana, if you can sneak behind him, just push him out a little bit forward into like your hit scans line of sight. And um, also just to use it to peel your other support player. You know, like I said, say this Baptiste starts getting, starts getting targeted, you jump on, peel whatever they're being attacked by, and that's that. Now, um, you can also use it just to push enemies away from you too. Like there's times where let's just say like your front line's getting pressured a little bit too hard. Just a little bit of a little walk forward, push them away, can be enough to get value out of it. Now here you can see our Lucio players goes for a pretty uh goes for a 1v1, which is fine. <laughs> we'll see how it goes. It doesn't uh doesn't end up going too well, but it's still a fine decent call to try to try it. You know? Sometimes you gotta limit test, right? But neither doesn't work out, but that's okay. Lucio, um, for Lucio's ultimate, you really want to be focusing on like more or less kind of similar to what it was like in Overwatch 1. It's just that you kind of have to think about it a little bit differently, right? So in Overwatch 1, Lucio's ultimate was like, okay, you save it for the enemy's ult, right? Okay, you save it for the Graviton Surge. Okay, you save it for the Gravitic Flux, whatever. And you still want to do that. But there's usually going to be less that's capable of getting these sort of kills. Um, you did see our Lucio player use it to support her team in like this brawl earlier, which is a, a more advanced way of doing things. I wouldn't recommend like doing it too, too much unless you're starting to climb and getting up towards like um, higher diamond masters kind of thing. But it helps essentially just enable more sustaining in a push or something like that. Um, and so what you can essentially do with it is just use it to either help your team become even more aggressive when they're pushing or to peel them and sustain your team when they're getting pressed, right? But in general, the best thing to do with it until you have a really good grasp with this of the, the original portion is just save it for an ultimate. So if you know the Zari hasn't used her ult for a while or you know that the Genji hasn't used a nano blade for a while, like save it for that kind of stuff, right? Um, but again, when you have a grasp on that, maybe try practicing like your tempo. 
they're, they're called temple ults essentially it's when you have like an interpretation of like what's going on and you know that there is a um you know there's an ultimate coming soon or not an ultimate there's like a pressure occurring right like you see your team getting pushed too far back you beat to sustain them like the enemy hits like their own beat into your team and you're like oh my team's getting pressed too hard but you wait a little bit and then you hit your own beat to counteract that sort of stuff it's basically like how goats was played is goats was played in like a bunch of different temple ults which is kind of you know for those of you who know what that is you might understand if you don't then bad example but um yeah all right guys now i want to do a little bit of rundown of some actual gameplay while i talk about it just so you can see the sort of stuff i've been talking about getting put into context um, so starting off, like I said, you start off with poking, and when you're playing Lucio, you're really watching for some sort of, like, trigger, right? As you can see here, um, let me back up a little bit. As you can see here, basically, like, right now, our Lucio player is, like, poking and waiting for something to go down. As soon as, like, a, a kill is secured here, like you can see, that's essentially time to push. You're, at, like, our Lucio player is at such a low risk of dying, um, and so you're able to walk in aggro with uh, the Zario player. Not too aggro that you're just feeding, but enough that you are like now pushing them all the way back here and they're just being they're just being pushed back right so nothing too crazy was needed here um the lucio players team ended up carrying this fight getting a kill obviously our lucio player wasn't feeding but nothing really had to happen at that point our uh, lucio in this game does have less to deal with in regards to like what we're like what her responsibilities are because there's no flankers to deal with so the only real responsibilities are just like are just containing this tempo that's going on <clears throat> and when i say tempo i mean like the push and pull of the match so you know like when our team's getting pressure too hard you cut back a little bit and you facilitate with that that with the speed or you wait till your team gets pressured down a little bit and then you help them with your healing um you are gonna see like a really aggressive beat play here where since they're so close to their spawn our lucy player knows that anything they get they're gonna get faster respawns in so an aggro beat pushes them into the gets them through this choke point for safe position allows um our lucio player to go into their back line and get a lot of value out of this situation right it's like does end up dying yeah but it doesn't matter because the genji is fragging out and getting to their back line pushing them around made the sojourn miss position um or force or, so force the sojourn to be in a bad position and did a lot of things like that right so that's the kind of thing I was talking about where like an aggro, an aggro beat. When you like when you do use the beat in the situation, it's basically just like you're just slapping down the cards and you're like, all right, I want my team to be able to press harder and be safe doing it, right? So you can do it to push through chokes that are really difficult. Um only when the fight's already going on. You don't you don't just want to do it, right? But yeah. With this, <clears throat> same sort of thing. Playing off of a cooldown doesn't get doesn't end up getting caught out here with an ultimate but using the the speed boost to speed in her genji player gets the genji player a lot closer um lets them have an advantage in the fight right and it's enough that the rest of the team was able to secure the positioning and get a lot get a lot of value out of it like i said really you're not so much going to be able to play for these like really hard speed boost plays but when you do see the enemy getting low and backing up it's probably the time to put on the speed boost and just walk forward and calm your teammates like hey let's keep pushing keep pushing i speed up let's go let's go that sort of thing and the exact opposite occurred one of um one of wicked's teammates here got killed and so then you use the speed boost to speed boost everyone out and get out and this sort of thing just you know keeps four extra or three yeah four extra teammates alive including yourself and just stops the enemy from getting to push forward Secure the kills, um, maybe play really far up the map, get a lot of get a lot of old charge off of you. So it's a very high level play. But it's just like using that speed boost to get out. Because that is that is one that is a lot more like viable. Like your teammates will back up frequently, they won't go forward as frequently. So um, it's not so much of like uh hey, I wanna try and use my speed boost to push my team forward, but usually more of like I wanna push use speed boost to push my team back sort of thing or like allow my team to escape easier so that's something you can watch for because even if you're getting like you know two or three people out when you would have only gotten one out before or only one would have survived it just gives the team the enemy team a lot less old charge um on push maps it's super super valuable because your team can group up faster and stuff like that so. so now the team's getting pushed 
And just like I talked about, you hold the beat for the ultimate. When an ultimate comes out, the, the Kiriko ultimate came out, was pressuring the enemy, pressuring our team really, really hard. So Wicca ended up using the, the beat to sustain that pressure. And it's basically like they absorb it, and then you push right back with the extra value that you've gotten out of it. So it gives you huge value in doing that. And now, because the pressure is getting put on so hard, Wicca goes for an aggro play against this this um, this Ash here, and does end up getting killed. But it doesn't like you have to understand. Sometimes that's okay, right? And so what ends up happening here is, um, like Wicca's team, like right now, Wicca's team is heavily winning the fight on point, right? They just killed Azaria. And the only thing that's going to stop the game, stop the enemy from winning, is this Ash. Like, this Ash could walk up, two-shot the Genji, just start fragging out long enough for something else to sustain in the point. And so, Wicca goes for it. Ends up taking all of the aggro for it, like a D.Va would. Dying. But perhaps those two shots would have gone into the Genji's head. And then the Genji wouldn't be able to pop this blade and secure all these kills right here. Three kills, right? That's a three kill potentially traded for one death, essentially. Like I said, don't... Don't just go run around like inting your brains out because you're like, well, done your side, I can go die to stop something. You do obviously want to live and it's a very like fine line. And when you are playing at the top of the game like Wicca is, um, and you're competing against other players who are also playing at the top of the game, everything becomes really fine margins. But the fundamentals of taking care of a target that can do a lot of harm to your team is, is important. So. Here you're going to see some defensive play now. <clears throat> Again, everything starts the same. You obviously are going to be focused less on pushing into the enemy team because you don't need to. They are the ones that need to come into you. Um, but since you do have a defensive advantage, you can go for these sort of like these plays to misposition the enemy. Like right here, you see Wiccan of Zazari is coming around the corner, goes for it, tries to push him in. It does displace the Zarya a bit more. The Zarya ends up taking a chunk of damage off of that. And even these slight, slight advantages could be enough um, to like win fights off of. And almost gets a kill out of the Zarya with the, the almost gets an actual kill on the Zarya later on with the same sort of concept, right? But when you are playing in defense, you're going to want to be holding your healing boost to just heal your teammates. Like a Lucio that was constantly heal amping in Overwatch 1 was just going to get out sustained and just going to lose against other um, against other teams. But Overwatch 2 is different now because the game has changed and you don't have the ability to have two tanks. So, and um, Brigitte got nerfed a lot. So, you are now more of like this sort of diva you flanker thing, you know? Um, and so you do have these opportunities to like, beat into the back line like this. Let me, let me show you guys. You do have the opportunity to um, speed into the enemy back line here. You know, seize an opportunity. The Junkrat or the Gindy's on in, so the pressure's not on the Lucio, so now it's time to push in, get a boop on two players, and and push them away. Now the timing for this sort of stuff, you don't want to just go for it, right? You don't want to be sitting there like, you know what? It's time for me to run to their back line. You're gonna die. But when you have like something drawing the attention, like you have the Genji and the literally in the enemy's back of the enemy's team, when you can look at them, you see they're all looking at somebody else, and you're like Zari is pressuring them out front, that's a really good time to push, right? So in this situation. Um, because you are in like a defensive position, you are waiting to like make sure your um, make sure you use that B on some sort of defensive capability. There are options to hold it here for both the beat, both the graviton surge, or um, using it early to counter something. But our Lucio player does end up using it to counter the beat rather than count the counter the graviton surge. Like I said, for lower, for like non like 4,500 or I guess Grandmaster 1 or whatever tier gameplay, I would recommend saving it just for the beat. But um, in these situations, you can still counter a lot of aggro from the enemy team off that kind of stuff. And even if your team gets Graviton Surge, the enemy might be too low to be able to actually finish it off of it. So. But like I said, Lucio's just, Lucio's different now. You know, Lucio is not this speed bot but the fundamentals of having the speed are still there. So you are paying, or you are still paying attention to like when you want to push your teammates in, when you want to pull them out. But really, you're looking more to just play this character to get consistent, decent healing on your teammates. Um, essentially, go for going for displacement boops, using the ultimate to survive with, 
really, really peel your teammate. Especially in the meta that we're playing right now, you're gonna see Genjis everywhere. So the Genji players are gonna be har are gonna be harassing your backline like all the time. And uh Genjis are or Lucio's are like the best thing in the game to take care of Genji right now. You, you do have to be careful about going to aggro though, because sometimes you uh like even like getting small like caught out just a tiny bit right here. Like going onto the wrong side of the uh the statue here because Azaria was pressuring. Our Lucio ended up getting him killed. So one last little tip I wanted to give in this is to be really careful about using your beat from a high ground. Basically what'll happen a lot is, you know, people think it, it fits and it's fun and whatever, and they're flying on the wall because you can on Lucio, and then they need to use a beat, but it pushes you up when you do it. Like you do a little leap, even if you already are in the air, um, which ends up getting killed very frequently. So you really do have to be careful not to like do that, to be completely honest. Lucio, as much as this sounds weird, does really want to be close to the ground. The higher you are away from the enemy team, the more likely you are to lose the opportunity to use that ultimate. For example, like say, you know, our Lucio is walking in right now. And the Zarya had held the grab a little bit longer, right? And so Zarya tosses the, or sorry, I mean, this is, this is our teammate, but let's say there is a, there's Zarya had secured the ultimate and walked back in and just tossed it into a group. If our Lucio player is right on the ground, the beat's going to be like, you know, it's going to be like, mm, phew, and go off, right? Which can oftentimes, even that alone, be not enough time to like stop something from getting killed. Like for example, let's say the uh, the Junkrat on our team was was grabbed. The Ash can get that in two shots pretty easily. But you know, it's so it's a tight, it's like tight margins as is. And so what'll happen is if you're higher up on the high ground, or like if you know you're on the wall like up here, you'll end up getting caught out. And you'll try and hit it and you'll land too late and you'll get killed um or not you'll get killed but your team will get killed also i guess one more last little thing but for those of you who don't know lucio's gets faster as you jump off of walls from wall to wall to wall so when you are trying to like come back to spawn come back from spawn you really want to try and use the walls as much as possible to jump off of but you really really particularly want to try and like skim it right like if this is the wall you just want to like jump off the side of it like as you can see here, um, our Lucio player is not actually touching the wall. Just barely, barely, barely skimming it and jumping. Trying to min-max it so much like misses a one, I think, which whatever. But um, like I'll show you again. Like even here, like tries to just barely get off the wall, barely on the wall there, barely on the wall. Um, if you land on the ground and you jump, it maintains some of your momentum so you can keep going. And lets you get back a lot faster. So whenever you are using that, you really want to be on the wall. You don't want to be like grabbing onto the wall and like sliding on it. Like you want to be trying to like maximize the capability of the um, maximize the capability of doing this rather than like just holding onto the wall, you know, because it gives you extra momentum and it's just like the less time you touch it, the better. Basically, you always want to be jumping on the wall. Um, like as you can see, like oh, let me just pick a spot here, like anywhere in this gameplay, if I go there. As you can see, you just jump on the wall, not ever really using the wall, like just holding onto it too tightly because that slows you down. And that takes away like all your momentum, you know, and makes you predictable and gives your movement a lot of predictable movement. As you can see, just barely, barely tickling the wall with every single jump. Tickle, 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 and just like barely like jumping off the edge of things constantly. Like even in a situation like that, like even when you're, uh, even when you're backing up into this, just Hitting that and jumping off of it. It, uh, it just makes you less predictable, makes your movement faster, quicker, more responsive. If you're looking for some more Overwatch 2 content, then make sure to check out these videos I have right here. Like I said, I'm a top 100 Overwatch player, so I have lots of videos and things to share with you guys.